Hey guys, it's Tanika Pantoa, and one common question I get is how do I go about animating scenes with transformation? You know, body mutation, dysmorphia, a character gradually turning from design A to design B. Specifically, I get asked about how I went about animating the transformation sequence in my Dusk's Flight short, where we have this young girl transform into a fire-breathing dragon. If you haven't seen the short, go check it out. It's something that I've worked on for quite some time. It's finally out and your support means a lot to me. In this video, I'll talk about that particular scene and other transformation related animation I've done in the past. Now, this isn't necessarily a tutorial, but me talking about my overall process and my thoughts working on each of these. One thing to remember about having a good and memorable animation sequence is having a solid storytelling. This means you know what's happening, why it's happening, and how it's happening. And of course, this applies to our transformation sequence. Now, I don't want the character to just have a still pose and then slowly morph into a new design like an Animorphs book cover. First, I thumbnail my ideas to get an idea of key poses and performance I would like to explore. For this transformation sequence to feel grounded and believable, the character's performance and overall emotion has to be sound. I would do these little sketches describing the character pose, where the transformation starts. When I thumbnailed it, I was thinking this transformation starts with this character's arm first, and then it slowly crawls up to her other arm towards her back, where maybe the wings start to reveal itself, and then towards her face, slowly building that up. And I'm thinking about all of this while maintaining a character performance in mind. You know, she's in fear, and also she's in pain creating that sense of clear relatability so the scene feels more impactful with the audience. There's a sequence in Gargoyles that I was really inspired by, edit-wise, shot-wise, so I would use that as a sense of inspiration. Now, if you're trying to get solid animation and solid performance, I highly recommend you thumbnail and think about your animation before you start animating. Little doodles, little drawings to see what ideas you can explore. Then I would move on to doing rough animation. And when I mean rough, it's very loose and simple, a really quick shorthand. And the reason for this is just to get the performance out of the way. Good drawing can come later. I do my start pose first and then probably my last pose next. And when I mean last pose, the end results. So what she looks like as a fully transformed dragon. From there on, I'm adding poses in between those two poses to describe the transformation, the sequence from beginning to end. It's because my drawings are so rough and loose, it allows me to prioritize the movement, the performance, before I move on to finessing the drawing, like I said. I'm describing my extremes, my breakdowns, how the character conveys weight, and some texture in the timing during the transformation sequence. Timing is really important here. If it's too fast, it'll feel weightless and not as impactful. If it's too slow, it's also gonna feel really weightless and way more floaty than usual. So some parts where her back is slowly transforming, I made that much slower, but when her arms start to transform, I made those like quick, quick bursts. And when I talk about texture, it's things like a character kind of shaking, a character wiggling, instances where the character tries to raise her head, but she keeps, you know, dipping down due to, due to other mechanics and other bits and pieces. And what I'm thinking about here is that it's not a character just morphing into a new design. It's more about a character introducing one idea at a time, the arm, then the other arm, then her back, and then her head. I'm telegraphing that information to the audience. It starts with her reaching forward, her arm then bursts into a new dragon's arm, which is then followed by her other arms, and then her shoulders, and then her back emitting wings. And after I get those out of the way, this is when I have the character's face. The most important part of this character, and a good way to finally wrap up this transformation is have the face fully transformed. But like I said, I would add more extremes in between these ideas. I would add more texture. So a character, like I said, shaking and stuff like that, dipping down, wiggling around. And once I'm actually happy with that, then I move towards tie down. Next, I move on to the tie down drawings. Now, this is not cleanup, but it's still considered rough animation. It's where I start solidifying the drawings or matching the drawings to the final design or being on model. I implement cloth details, solid drawing, and other specific design notes. Since I already have the performance down, it's more about making clear looking drawings that match up to the animation, to the model sheet, and to the character design. I do them in the order I did my rough. My beginning and ending main keys, and then extremes and breakdowns in between, and then extremes in between those extremes that I just did. If I did my entire animation using straight ahead methods, 
I would try to find my main milestones throughout the animation. So maybe my first key pose, my final key pose, or maybe eight really strong key poses from that straight ahead animation, and then work my way through. Now, again, I'm not being super precious about how clean the line looks. It's still relatively sketchy, but I can actually use these rough tie down drawings for the next stage, which is cleanup. Now let's talk about cleanup or ink and paint. Now that I have my tie down passed down, I clean it up with final lines ready for color. Not much is to be said here, but now I'm making drawings cleaner for the final look. Same order I did my breakdown drawings and making sure the drawings stay consistent throughout. As you can see, the skin tone for the dragon and the girl are different, and that stuff can be cheated when the animation is wild enough to hide that abrupt change. Especially when the character dips her head down, it only takes a few frames or a few drawings to have that character in a completely new design. So for those few of those drawings, I manually had color choices where it gradually started from this skin tone to this gray dragon color. Again, a lot of this is also cheated with effects animation. Initially, I had lightning effects every time her cloth is ripped apart, some fiery effects when some of those clothes kind of burn away. This was to hide some of those elements where the transformation might seem a bit cheap or cheated, or to hide really crappy drawings. And when I see how it looks, I think it looks all right. The performance and acting is there. Now, there was a time that I just abandoned the project because I didn't really know what I was doing with it. But when I came back to it, I realized that I had updated the character's design. So I ended up redoing it, but I did not want to redo the overall performance and the overall animation itself. But I did have to redo the entire drawing bit. That's when I had to go back to the tie down stage. The animation is already done. So I just used the final old pass that I did way back and just used that as a reference or my rough animation. I drew over my old final version of the animation with a rough tie down featuring the new design. After the tie down, I then went to clean up and finally to color. The challenge here was kind of forcing the new design into the old animation because the, pro the proportions are different, the design is different, so I had to sort of realign how the joints worked, how the arms are positioned, how the legs are positioned, etc. I was worried that I was going to have to brainstorm how the transformation occurs with her face, but luckily the animation called for her facing downward, so you don't really see her face while her body is going through the transformation. And it's only when she looks back up, that's when her face is a fully realized dragon. So that actually worked best to my advantage because it really shows that, you know, the drawings don't have to be technically sound or they don't have to be the best draftsmanship drawings out there, but the performance will really help sell that animation. So the reason why I redesigned Sarah and her new dragon form was due to the story and art direction. You know, I wanted a character that felt charming and appealing and youth-like but also matching with Sarah's dragon form, whereas her old dragon form felt a little generic. But also this new design felt adorable, but at the same time can feel formidable. I also wanted a more anime look for the characters. But yeah, that's the transformation sequence in question. In the short, there is actually another transformation sequence. And it happens really fast, which is the part where Logan is fighting this Wraith. She transforms into some skull dragon thing, launching herself at Logan. This was so much easier to do than Sarah's since it happened so fast, but that doesn't mean I wasn't thinking about the animation and character performance. The character charges up into the shot into this nice slow out, meaning it's accelerating in speed. Once she reaches to the camera, she explodes in a quick burst of frames, revealing a new form. There's only one or two drawings that show the morph or the change of the design, but again, a lot of trickery is being played to hide certain elements. I also added an impact frame, which allowed me to have a completely new design right after it. And also it adds more impact. Again, performance is key. She's become so feral at that point where she's more loose and she's more animated and more wild. It just really helped sell that small transformation into this wild, feral, dangerous thing. Luckily, I didn't have to think too much about selling a slow, gradual transformation like I did with Sarah. It was an instant 
and it was mostly just the character's shoulders and head, so I don't really have to think about her overall limbs. Now, both of these shots heavily relied on the performance, so it doesn't have the character just slowly and smoothly morph into the design. But I did use that slow, gradual morphing element after she gets shot. There's a scene where Logan shoots her with the rifle, and you can see parts of her body's disintegrating, some parts are opening it up, just to make that disintegration a lot more dramatic. But I wanted to show these two because they're both transformation sequences, they're both violent, but they're both handled differently. One feels instant and absolute, the other felt more like this gradual thing building up. Again, I'm thinking about what I'm trying to say between these two transformation sequences and how they contrast each other, and what they say about the characters. Okay, now I'm going to show you this juicy long test with one of the characters I did for a show called Kipo, and that character is Dave. Dave is this mutant that's supposed to be a bug, and he's sort of somewhat supposed to be immortal. He kind of keeps cycling his overall life cycle. He starts out as an egg, and then this kid larva thing, this teenager, this adult, this buff man, and then the final old age. And then after that, the cycle repeats. My task for animating the stage was to kind of show how he gets from one transformation stage to the next, and what I'm trying to say with each of those transformations. Like I usually do with all my work, I thumbnail first, but I always do a rough loose pass of my animation after that just to focus on the acting, the performance, and the overall movement and mechanics. I also need to let you know, these ideas and gags are not entirely my original ideas. A lot of these were inspired by storyboards I was given at the time. I wish I remember who initially did them, maybe it was Red, but honestly I wish I knew. From its egg form, I thought it would be funny to have a character just pop out from its head and then finally the egg hatches to reveal its body. As soon as baby Dave crawls out of that eggshell, he just walks around like a stupid kid to show a bit of that childlike character performance. I implemented the idea from the animatic where this kid just freezes up and just drops dead, breaking open from the back to reveal this teenage character sulking and climbing out in a daze. I thought it would be funny where baby Dave's skin was still stuck on teenage skin's foot and then he just kicks it off. But still, the emphasis was to have the character a bit more clumsy and a bit more unsure of himself. Now let's talk about the transformation from his teenage self to his adult self, because this is where I really had to think about animation in a technical level. When he morphs into his neutral or adult design, I wanted it to feel a bit uncanny and gross. I had Dave as a teenager, and the next drawing I had Dave as a full adult. Now the challenge here was to see how I can make this transformation gradual from A to B. I would then make multiple extremes, in-betweens, and breakdowns to show that morph. And in these extremes while he's slowly morphing, I really wanted to create asymmetry in the overall animation. So the eyes will pop out for a brief moment, parts of the lips will bulge out briefly, some bits overshoot. But the other challenge here was to have his old skin sort of break along with him. So it's still on him, but it's slowly being torn apart, really making it gross. And it's accompanied by gross sound effects. And as you can see in the final tie down, there's actually juice effects, there's actually liquid and slime. I did all of that straight ahead on top of a new layer. So when there's a tear in a character's skin or maybe a part of the body kind of bulges and breaks and cracks, that's where I added a bit of those slime to just make it feel a little gruesome. Or any part where a character just pops. Just to give that Akira-esque feel to it. Next was the buff transformation. Now again, this is very similar to Sarah's transformation where the character sort of leans forward, lunges down with the most action happening on their back. Wings pop out, the back gets bigger, and the shoulders get buffer. I'm thinking about leading the eye, kind of instructing how the audience is supposed to look at Dave's transformation. Good animation design is knowing how to lead the eye, how to prioritize or emphasize certain things, and how to pull back and subdue certain things that are not as important for that moment. By the time Dave stands up, I just thought it would be funny to give him this bodybuilder pose, this funny dramatic superhero pose, very corny, just to sell a bit of that character and what he's like when he's buff. As for the old man part, again, I thought it would be funny to lead the audience where, you know, there's cracks happening on his chest, he looks down, and as soon as we establish that information, that's when the old man just bursts through his torso and pretty much killing his old man form. 
Now from his old man back to the egg, this is where it was tricky, but I think what Red wanted was his old self to sort of collapse awkwardly like a broken vehicle just collapsing as it still goes along, like breaking apart right in front of us. So I just had Dave as an old man, his arms fall off, his after all of those fall off, that's when they turn into dust and they just dissolve into the wind. And the pile of body parts, after it's been dissolved, we reveal the egg underneath all of it. And the cycle repeats. So yeah, I want to show you guys examples of my transformation animations that I've done just to show different approaches to each of them and how I did some of the problem solving and how each of these called for different solutions. At the end of the day, it's about intention and what you're trying to say about the said animation. And for this case, the said transformation, it can be playful like I did for Dave, it could be dramatic and painful like I did for Dusk's Flight for Sarah, or it could be, you know, magical and fun like a Sailor Moon transformation. You know, there's so much of that. But really think about the character and the overall performance because that's going to make the transformation much more engaging, much more believable and relatable. And again, that all leads to it being memorable. But hey, I hope you liked it, bye. Interested in learning hand-drawn animation or learning how to finish an animated shot from beginning to end? Have a look at the store where you'll find the complete introduction to 2D animation video course, tutorials, and other resources. Learn classical animation approaches, drawing, lectures, techniques, and other process videos. Visit the store through the link in the description below.